This is the Pinebook Pro, a very inexpensive laptop you can buy from Pine64, who are well known in the realm of the GNU Linux, BSD and free software communities, but probably not so much to regular people. This is very much an informal review, so it's not going to be an apples to apples comparison against other devices, or a 40 minute video where half of it is just spent unboxing the thing. It's more about what my experience has been like, what I like about it, what I dislike about it, and whether I'd ultimately recommend it. But before we get started, I'd like to clarify that Pine64 did not send me this for free. But even if they did, I would still be as honest and fair in my criticism as possible. This laptop is $219, equivalent to £173 or around €200. Euros. You'll also have to pay quite a bit for shipping, and the cost of shipping depends on where you live. But even with that, you're still paying about as much as you'd pay for an entry-level Chromebook. And for the price, the hardware is very nice, as we've got a 1080p IPS display, the exterior of the laptop is made from magnesium alloy, and the inside is made of a soft matte plastic. The keyboard is also pretty nice, not as nice as a ThinkPad keyboard or a proper desktop keyboard, but it's better than that of most low-end laptops. I don't really like the italic font, but that is just a preference and not a criticism of the laptop. The trackpad itself feels nice and it has a nice tactile click, but it's very awkward to use and it feels a bit too sensitive, so I'd recommend carrying a wireless mouse with you. Now what makes this laptop interesting, besides the fact that it runs Linux, is the CPU. This thing is rocking a Rockchip RK3399, a hexacore ARM-based SoC. Now ARM CPUs are not new. In fact, they're the standard for things like smartphones, tablets, routers, streaming boxes, and SBCs. But on the desktop and in servers, x86 CPUs manufactured by Intel and AMD are the standard. Companies like Microsoft and Nokia have tried to introduce ARM to the desktop market with devices like the Surface RT, but it wasn't until Apple moved from Intel to their homegrown silicon processors that things really took off. Which goes to show that ARM can be used for powerful desktop computing, and doesn't have to be limited to small-scale devices. Not to mention there's another CPU instruction set similar to ARM called RISC-V, which is fully open source, although that's a topic for another video. Now, I'd argue this ARM processor is both the laptop's biggest strength and its biggest weakness, because on one hand ARM CPUs run cooler and are a lot more power efficient than their x86 counterparts, and they don't have spooky stuff like the Intel management engine. So with a laptop like this, you could theoretically have a modern computer that is 100% free software, even at the firmware level, without paying an arm and a leg. On the other hand, a lot of programs, especially proprietary ones, only run on x86, so don't think this is going to be a drop-in replacement for your x86 laptop. Speaking of software, this laptop comes pre-installed with Manjaro ARM with the KDE Plasma desktop. I'm not a big fan of Manjaro, and although I do like the Plasma desktop, I was quite disappointed with the performance. It's not horrendous, and it is usable, but it's not instant or as snappy as I'd like it to be, and you can definitely feel it. Maybe I just have very high standards, but I think XSG or Mate would have been a better default option. Also on Manjaro, I couldn't launch any new programs I installed, and I also couldn't update or install certain programs like Critter. Thankfully, there are quite a few OS options, and I decided to install Armbian instead, which is basically just a fork of Debian optimised for ARM. I also decided to flash Tobu onto the SPI, since unlike a normal computer, the Pinebook Pro doesn't have a traditional BIOS or UEFI. Instead, the firmware lives on the same storage medium as the operating system. But this also makes things more difficult if you want to install another operating system, as you can't just pull up a boot menu and choose an external device. After installing Ambien, things were much better. It doesn't come with a GUI by default, but I decided to install i3 Window Manager and a bunch of utilities to get a nice functional lightweight desktop. Now you can't run Windows on this device, at least not officially, but even if you could, you probably wouldn't want to because the performance would be quite rubbish. So with this new setup, what is it like to use this laptop for general computing? Well it's actually pretty good. Nice. Using Qt Browser or Chromium with uBlock Origin, Basic web browsing works fine, and even video streaming from sources like BBC iPlayer, Netflix and YouTube works well, even at 1080p. YouTube takes a moment to load because it's a very bloated website, but once the page loads the video plays just fine. If you want a smoother YouTube experience, I'd recommend using Invidious, which is a third party web client for YouTube, with no ads or proprietary JavaScript. 
LibreOffice works as a great alternative to Microsoft Office with the same basic functionality of Word, Excel and PowerPoint. It works fine, but it wasn't as smooth as I'd like it to be, and I'm not sure if it's because it's a bit bloated, if it's not as well optimised for ARM, or if the computer just isn't fast enough. Though for plain text editing, you can just use a plain text editor like gedit or vim, and it has absolutely no problem with that. For communication, I installed Thunderbird as an email client, which runs pretty well. In terms of chat applications, proprietary programs like Microsoft Teams, Slack and Discord don't have builds for Linux on ARM, but you can use the web clients in your browser. However, Telegram has a native Linux ARM client, and if you use any open source protocols like Matrix, XMPP, Mumble or IRC, you've got quite a few options. For creative programs, you're not going to be running proprietary tools like Photoshop or After Effects, but the popular FOSS tools like Critter, Inkscape, Audacity and Caden Live all run on ARM. In fact, I was even able to render a short video. Now, you might be wondering, what about gaming? Unfortunately, the vast majority of games are not compatible with ARM, and neither are programs like Steam, but not all is lost thanks to FOSS games and emulation. 2D games like Supertux and T-Worlds run with no problem and are very smooth, averaging around 60 FPS with the default settings. Freedom also runs very well, and I could even run the game at 1080p, unlike the pink netbook where I had to run the game at 640x480 to get a playable experience. OpenTTD runs very well, although admittedly I don't know how to play it. Now into some 3D games, which are definitely more challenging for the computer. Super Tux Kart is very choppy and not very enjoyable out of the box. Lowering the graphics settings to their minimum fixes this, although it does make the game look a bit ugly. Although it's still playable, and that's what matters. Quake 3 Arena and Open Arena, which is a fork of Quake 3 Arena, don't run great at native resolution, even with the settings dropped down. And this is where I noticed a problem. This laptop's hardware doesn't support resolution scaling, so I can't change the game's resolution unless I change it within the console. And if I do that, I can only play the game in a window, which is quite annoying. However, if you're prepared to play the game in a window, or if you're going to play it on an external display that's below 1080p, then it's actually a pretty decent experience. In a way, playing these games at a low frame rate is quite charming. It reminds me of the good old days when I used to play TF2 at 15 FPS. And the most challenging game I tried was Zero AD. At high settings it's very choppy, but it runs well at the lowest settings and I'd say it's playable since it's not a fast paced game like a shooter or a platformer. I also installed Nestopia, which is great for NES emulation and you could probably emulate other game consoles like the Mega Drive and N64. Ok so what are my thoughts with this laptop? Well, let's start with the pros. Build quality. Despite its low price, this laptop does not feel cheap. It's thin, lightweight, and in my opinion the perfect size for a laptop, as it's small enough to be portable, but large enough to comfortably use it for real work. Lack of branding. With the exception of the super key and a sticker on the bottom, there's no branding on this laptop, which is nice as it feels like it's actually your device and not some company's property. Battery life. It's not the best, but under normal use it's not bad either, and certainly better than any used laptop I've tried. I wrote a big chunk of this script at a shopping centre where I didn't have easy access to electricity, and it fared well. Privacy switches. There are hotkeys that disable the webcam, microphone, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. There's also a key combination to disable the trackpad, which is handy when I'm typing and don't want to keep moving the cursor. There's quite a lot you can do with it. I thought this would basically just be a Raspberry Pi in a laptop's body, but I was pleasantly surprised by how well things like video streaming worked and by the amount of software that runs on ARM. No spookiness. Since it runs Linux, runs almost entirely free software and doesn't have Intel management engine, there's no CIA big tech spookiness going on. At least that's what I think. The webcam. It's not the best, but I've seen worse webcams on laptops that are five times the price. And the fact we have a webcam at all is quite nice. Now, let's talk about the cons. Charging. This laptop is quite slow to charge. It's a lot faster if you turn the laptop off while it charges, but the problem with that is you don't know how much it's charged and when it's finished charging. The default software experience. Maybe I'm just unlucky, but Manjaro on with KDE was just too slow and unstable for my liking. I think Debian with LXQT or Mate would have been a better default for this machine. 
I'm thinking of making a version of TARDIS for Debian on the Pinebook Pro, both for my own use case, but also for anyone who wants this setup on their Pinebook Pro. Only 4GB of RAM. It's actually not terrible because this laptop runs Linux rather than Windows, but having the option to upgrade to 8GB would be nice. The speakers. I am by no means an audiophile, I don't really care about fancy sound quality, but the speakers are so quiet and tinny that I think they're basically unusable. The trackpad. The trackpad itself feels nice, but for some reason it's quite difficult and annoying to use, so I'd recommend using a wireless mouse. Overall I'd say this is a very decent laptop, but it's definitely not for everyone. In any case, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.